sure enough. No, that's a fair reaction. That's an Cause, honest. Because five thousand dollars, I gotta say, buys a lot of tacos. Exactly, or you know, a lot of sushi. Oh, or both. Yeah, preferably not from the same place, though. Yeah. Mick that Chang's. I think I'd be a little concerned about. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a uh, there's a place I saw on the way to a con once that was a Chinese slash Mexican restaurant that had a name like Pedro McChang's. I have a picture of it somewhere. <laughs> But, um, but no, she was Okay, wants... I, I, Rob probably didn't tell you this. On my way to Charlotte, on one of my stops, I saw part of a sign for a tire place, and I was positive it said kosher tires. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, it was just Fisher tires, and I was really, really disappointed. I, I would have... <laughs> did you stop? Or did you slow down to get a picture? <laughs> Not once I realized what it actually said. No. Yeah, because if it said kosher, then you stop for a picture. Oh, absolutely. Uh, no, but this is literally a girl who I once saw her win $400 from some sort of contest. Mm -hmm. And her reaction was, well, I guess I'm going to have to find out how much I have to set aside for taxes. And well, I see that part would suck. Yeah, and I hope that this doesn't mess up my government medical benefits because I have a blo or this problem with my ankle and I can't work that much and blah, blah, blah. So this money is really just going to be trouble for me. <laughs> uh, it's 20%. Put away, you know, for, an, for an amount that small, it's 20%. Put away 20%. Shut up. <laughs> but now, every time anything good happened to her. She would only talk about the bad side. <laughs> I mean, I've met some pessimists in my life. She was worse than all of them. And she would probably freely admit that she was worse than all of them, too, and then say she didn't understand why anyone liked her, etc. Oh, road. Uh, one of those kind of people. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't even an attention whore about it, too. You could tell she honestly didn't understand. Because she was just such a natural pessimist. Mm -hmm. Then it was a bitch. I don't want nothing to do with you. Okay, there is some stuff inside this town. Ah, huh. yes. Buildings, at least. Not sure if it's going to be anything useful, though. Uh, trees halfway in the ground. Well. Okay, it's these buildings, which means there's probably not anything in them. Yeah. There is a village outside, though. That's good. No, but yeah, that was one of the things of she likes you. I'm like I'm lo I am losing her a you know, email contact, her aim address, removing her from MySpace at the time. Hmm. I don't want I mean she was cute and all. Cute doesn't pay, you know, or doesn't make up for that. Yeah. Um I that was just one of those things of haha no. And she was uh well, the funny thing is I actually met her when uh she was dating the friend, and I'll mention on the video because I don't care, the fr former friend of uh, ours who was just arrested for producing child porn. Okay, now Rob mentioned that uh, in Charlotte that that had happened just recently. Yeah, yeah. We all that, that wasn't Walter, right? No, that wasn't Walter. Uh, uh, this was another guy, and I hate to use the term, or say it, but uh, his name was Rob. Oh, uh, well, well, common well, enough name. And I don't care... Uh, so, uh, I'll call well, this him... Is dangerous. Yes, it is. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, we... Alright, the thing is, we all knew there was something off about him. Mm-hmm. We did not know it was that. I mean, uh, we always assumed that if he was gonna get, you know, arrested for diddling the kitties, it was probably gonna be a 15-year-old girl or something. Okay. Because he met his wife when she was 14, and they started going out then. And how old was he? Um, At the time? 26. Yeah, no. No. No, apparently no. her family was okay with it. Because Which doesn't make it any better. No, it doesn't. It, it just doesn't. means there's something wrong with her family. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, so... A friend posted that, and then, it, of course, it instantly turns into the how did we not notice this? Although, um, one great aunt of mine, I think, um, 
she was 16 and got married to a 38 year old. Yeah. But on the other hand, that was, you know, 50 years ago. Yeah. It's or the 60 50, years ago. It's the 50 or 60 years ago thing. That's a caveat to that. It wasn't. Right. Diff- that's what, that's why I mention it. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was a very surreal day for us. For everyone who knew him, because it was one of those, you know, how did we pick up on this? What the hell? Right. You know, oh my God, did you ever leave him alone with your kids, etc. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it instantly then turned into the rage of, we wish we had known so we could have kicked his ass. <laughs> and like, no, no, be glad we didn't know because we would have kicked his ass and then we'd be in prison. You know, you, we would be in jail. This would be bad. No, but the, the thing, though, that I brought up that apparently didn't bother anyone else. All right. This guy was a network admin. Uh huh. Like, he went to school to train for computers and programming and building computers and building peer to peer networks, among other things. Right. He got caught sharing his fucking child porn over a peer-to-peer program. Uh-huh. He know he it was like, a, doesn't he know? I mean, I won't even fucking share a Weird Al Yankovic CD over a peer-to-peer program. Hmm. You know, what made him think this was an idea? <laughs> Did he just lose his... Well, obviously lost his fucking mind. Well, yeah. But yeah, it's just one of those... But he's well. He yeah. How? None. He is someone we actually. Though I think in retrospect we probably should have seen it because he is someone we lost contact with because he attempted to feel up a friend's thirteen-year-old cousin. See, that seems like a warning sign. Yeah. I mean, he's. Like I said the because. I was actually reasonably good friends with him before that happened. Okay. Well, I mean, well, a long time ago. I actually, you know, dealt with him. I knew there was something wrong with him. I just assumed one day he'd figure out he was gay and he would probably be happier. (laughs) And uh, because he had nothing but female problems. But I don't know if you're anywhere around here, if it's... Ah, yeah, there you are. But yeah, it was, uh, I, I then recalled a conversation he and I had, which suddenly became even like horrifyingly creepy in retrospect, because we were talking about dating and we both agreed that we would not have any objection to dating a woman who had a child. Well, it was like, well, that, you know, suddenly took a turn for the horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah. That was that was a surreal damn day. I mean, it was one of those things. They just everyone's still talking about it now because you know it's one of those things. They all started joking about it to try and you know, you know, dark hu- or gallows humor to get over it. Mm-hmm. But it's very hard for me not to come in and just play fucking Reverend Killjoy. Yeah, you know, like whenever they're making jokes about it on, you know, like Facebook or something, you're like, yeah, that's hilarious. Except for the lives of the children that he ruined. Yeah. And, but I- I'm trying not to do that because, well, I personally think it would be hilarious, but I don't think anyone else would. <clears throat> I'm one of those people of, wow, all right, move on. Hmm. <laughs> Huh. Well, since, since we're on the subject, um, you remember at some point in the last couple of weeks I said to remind me to tell you the story of Nixter next time we recorded. Yes. So, okay, so you know about Radio Free Cybertron, mm. that we were like the first Transformers podcast before the word podcast actually existed. Yeah. So there was there was this other dude, screen name Nixter. Mm-hmm. Um who had listened to one or two episodes of Radio Free Cyber trying to decide, hey, I'd like to do this too. He actually said basically that in IRC one day. Mm. Um, but so I had talked to him at some point after he uh, started doing his own show, which was terrible, by the way. Mm. Um, and, you know, 
Yeah, he hung out in the IRC channel that uh, I spent a lot of time in. Hmm. Um, which, that'll be an important thing later on in the story, but, um, so, you know, he had his political leanings, as everybody does. Mm. He was fairly vocal about them. Mm. And even though I don't think his show lasted an especially long time, he continued to do things online. Um, after a while, such things as putting out, um, bounties on the heads of abortion doctors. Right. On his personal website. Uh-huh. The uh, the FBI got interested when he put, you know, like a $1.5 million bounty on some doctor's head. Uh-huh. Now, mind, mind you, he didn't have $1.5 million. Yeah, it makes you wonder what he'd do when the murderer actually came for the money. Because it seems like a murderer isn't somebody you'd want to stiff. No, not at all. No. So, you know, the FBI went to his house and impounded all his computers and such. Mm. Took him into custody, certainly. Um, and in the course of the investigation, found thousands upon thousands of pieces of child pornography. Right. <laughs> well, I uh, guess we know why he wanted there to be more babies. You're not the first person to make that joke, either. Uh. Um, so It's an easy one. Um, well, yeah. Okay, so, and the, the greatest part is his wife was pregnant at the time he got arrested for it, too. Um, wow. But no. So, in the IRC channel, you know, there were people ranging in ages. I was about 15 at the time, and there was um, a couple girls in there around the same age. Mm. And, of course, he was married and had kid on the way. He was, you know, at least in his late 20s. Yeah. And... He had made, I mean, even before there was context, he made what would be seen as uh, semi-creepy comments towards some of them. Yeah. But after we found out about that, it just got really, really icky. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think I think everybody who knew him, their favorite part of the story was... Um, when he was brought before the judge for sentencing, he broke down crying. Ah. Uh, that is nice. Uh, and he was, of course, barred from ever using a computer or the internet again in his life. Uh-huh. Now, mind you, this was in, like, 2002. Yeah. That we found out all of this had happened. You can't really survive without it these days. I'm sure you can. It would just suck. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but... That's. I've I've met a few fucking weird ass people. Did I ever tell you about the dominatrix that stalked me? Uh, was that the one who put the collar on you? No, no, that was one of the LARP. She was actually nice. I met a lot of dominatrixes. Well, uh, see, that's kind of my point. It's hard to keep up. Yeah, the ones that are nice you can usually deal with because if you tell them I'm not into that, they go, "Okay, that's cool." Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the end of it. Right. Because, you know, I'm not into that, and that's, you know, all that there should be said. Sure. But, um, you know, so there was this woman. Okay, first of all, I was 18, she was 35. Mm hmm I was talking to her and her 17-year-old boyfriend. Now, she was completely insane for the start, but apparently... I needed to play relationship counselor to her and her boyfriend because she didn't know how to keep her shit together. Okay. So I would literally end up having to call these people and talk to them over the phone. Now, I'd known them from essentially an online oh. role play. So <laughs> I was pretty sure I did not know them well enough. So I gave them my cell phone number because I could always get a new fucking cell phone. Sure. So, you know, I called them, her from that a few times and, uh, you know, talked to them and whatever. Eventually, because her boyfriend was actually from a very uh, funny thing. He was an extremely avid Transformers fan. And oh. he was, I can't remember his name exactly, but he at the time had the, in, uh, the unfortunate email address, which he did not know about. The other connotations for it, transfan69. You so, know? 
That sounds really familiar. I wish I could remember his name. I would tell you. But, um... He was really big into Transformers. He was from a rich family, so he had fucking millions of them. <laughs> Most of which were still in their original boxes that he would never open. He bought two copies, one to own and one to shelf. Uh-huh. Or if he couldn't find it, just one to shelf. But, um... Anyway, they ended up breaking up because she crazy. <laughs> and it's one of those situations you run into a lot with teenage guys. Which was... She was his first lay. He fell in love with her on the spot, uh, which was a mistake. So they ended up being together for way longer than they needed to, hmm. which was at all. So. So, yes, uh, they end up breaking up and I get a call from her in the middle of the night. She's crying. I talk to her. I'm like, yeah, everything's going to be OK. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you're an adult woman. Get over it is basically what it all ended up boiling down to. And she apparently took that to mean that she needed to be with me now. Um, no. And you left the game? I think I lagged out. Whoops. But yeah, that was, um... But yeah, so mm. she started sending me the most wonderfully bipolar text messages. And I've oh, those actually... are always fun. Yeah, and I, I met a lot of people with bipolar disorder, so it's not like I'm making fun of it. I mean, this was obviously a thing with her that I had not mm -hmm. picked up on. So I'd get a text message at like 3 a.m. that said, I love you, I want to be with you, which is immediately followed by, call me back or I'll mm. fucking kill your family. Mm. And, uh, and I'm like, she doesn't know where I live. Uh, she doesn't. You know, me, she doesn't know how to track me down. The cell phone number can't be tracked at this point because it was early in the Internet. It was very difficult to accomplish that sort of thing. Right. I mean, she might be able to find my name, but our phone number and address have always been unlisted in things like telephone books. Yeah. So back in those days, the Internet was actually very easy to remain anonymous. Sure. Ish. Well, you know, unless you got a hold of someone's, like, social security number, then you could still find out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it ended up with me just going to my mom and going, Hey, mom, I kind of need a new phone number. Hmm. And that was the end of it. That was the entire end of it. I mean, she basically, the last time she texted me, she was like, If you don't talk to me, I'll kill myself. And I remember texting her back, You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Because I really didn't care anymore. Hmm, like, is that something? Hmm. Uh, that was the early, yeah, that is a village of some sort or something. But yeah, that was well in the early days of the internet. From from my point of view, I think it was like sixteen at the time. Okay. So you know that's almost fifteen years ago. Or no, it's eighteen at the time. Damn it, numbers. <laughs> I know it's just fucking there's something in there <sighs> thank god alright but yeah that was when I learned to stop talking to people I met online uh, or at least giving out any personal information well yeah and I actually have a friend who I have known online well two friends I have known online for I think about three years longer than Rob's known you oh and I'd like to meet them eventually. They both live in Boston, and they're really cool people. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things of, eh, I'm not sure if I want any of them. Yeah, you know, I, I won't give my phone number out until I've met them, which is an odd statement. Huh. But, um, I think, you know, it, it's weird because I, I always viewed them as younger siblings. So it was extremely weird to me when, uh, or whenever they would talk to me about, you know, growing up and various things going on in their lives, and I'll be like, shit, when did huh. that happen? <laughs> when did you turn into a person? But, no, they're cool. One of them actually went to school for uh, video game design. Oh. I think he's designing medical web uh, websites now, actually, but um, still, his... 
Apparently his uh, graduating, whatever the hell you call it, like thesis was a uh, was to design a game the length of Final Fantasy VI for the Super Nintendo. Hmm. And he did in, you know, 2D, you know, old style sprites with art he created himself. And from what I understand, he got full marks. Nice. That's like, a, neat, you're probably way smarter than I am. I'd feel really dumb meeting you. <laughs> uh, I feel justified, though. I was apparently, or I was reading a, um, reading a article earlier that was explaining that some people's brains are literally just incapable of higher level math. It, it apparently does not mean that you are stupid. It just means that your brain does not function in a way that would allow you to do, say, algebra. Well, good luck convincing anybody else of that. I say, well, if researchers at MIT say it, I'm going to believe them at the least. Yeah, but good luck convincing other people of that. True. That was that was what I meant. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, that's my excuse from now on. My father agreed with it. He's like, yeah, that part of my brain doesn't function either. <laughs> Uh, God damn, it's dry in here, the problem. Oh, these. I hope when you befriend them, they don't instantly become hostile. Or if mm. you're planning to befriend them. But, um... Uh, ah. Then I've got a friend who... Apparently just broke up with his uh, girlfriend of ten years. Which is, well, that must be a little bit sad. Um, he's kind of over it because, as he said, he, you know, all right, I met him. I met his girlfriend. They're both wonderful people separately. Uh-huh. All right. They both are, they are, uh, they're my friends. I love them both. They are both completely undateable except for each other. <laughs> I mean... The fact that, you know, like, his girlfriend, well, his ex, really cute, really nice figure, really nice smile, horribly demanding. Uh. Well, like, all right, the job economy is, or job market's pretty much fucked at the moment. Yeah. Especially where they live in a very small town in the middle of nowhere. Right. She's able to get a job because she's working, you know, in or as a salesperson in a public place where a cute girl with a nice smile will hire a lot of people or will yeah. get a lot of customers. He is a pudgy white dude with, you know, always five o'clock shadow. Mm -hmm. It is nearly impossible for him to find a job. She, uh, and, you know, it's true. The only time I have ever seen her happy with him was when he had a job that made exactly the same amount of money she did, and he had exactly the same hours. <laughs> that was the only time I've ever seen her happy with his uh, with him. And when he started working more hours, she suddenly got really angry. Because he was making more money than her, and of course they weren't... I think you might have lagged out. Nope, you're moving. Well, I just ate a berry, so... Oh yeah, that'd do it. Oh, but, um, but yeah... Second, he started making more money and working more hours. She was angry because he was making more money than her and they didn't have as much time to spend together. Uh huh. Which you think would be a complaint, except what they do when they got home is much like what me and Angel do, which is sit at their computers and ignore each other for four hours. <laughs> this doesn't mean we don't care about each other. It just means that we want to be on the Internet. Hmm. So, yeah, he's basically sick of it. She's sick of him. And I got to admit, he doesn't. Oh, Look that's... at this tree. Oh, wow. It... Well, look at the ah, look at the shaft. I fell down the hill. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of a I, I just really wish I could tell them neither of you are worth the trouble. Yeah, hmm. you should really think of reconciling because he's been willing to put up with your bullshit for, you know, 10 years. You've been able to put up with him quitting jobs the second people start, you know, treating him like shit because he won't stay in a job if people start treating him like garbage. Mm -hmm. 
He has quit many a job because of that, and I can't blame him considering how some of them treated him. Right. But yeah, so you know, you know, you were you put up with that to some extent. You do really need to work this out. Hmm. You're you know both. You are both not good. I mean, like you said, those friends, they're really nice people. And it's just that, you know, together, well, date, uh, dating-wise, one of the four or five times they broke up, I went out clubbing with her and a friend, and the friend was like, oh, were, were you going to ask her out? No. <laughs> no, I was not. But uh, the funny part is, of course, that I've actually been told by one or two people, actually, I should say three or four people, that uh, relationship-wise, I am more dateable than her as a cute, large... There you go. She is, even though she's a cute, large-chested female. Huh. Uh, you have more positive qualities as a fat guy with no job prospects <laughs> who sits in a chair for 12 hours out of the day. You are more dateable. Like, huh. <laughs> What's that say? I am mean, Of course, kind of funny, because Angel keeps having those... She, she only rarely has girl moments like that. Like, where she gets jealous or anything. Uh-huh. When she does, they always catch me out of left field. Because <laughs> you're not expecting it. Yeah. She's, like, completely reasonable and rational 98% of the time. Then, like, every now and then, it'll just be crazy. And then she usually pauses and realizes what she said is crazy and apologizes. <laughs> like, huh. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I don't know. Apparently, I also have this problem where I flirt and don't know it. Uh. I mean, I don't think Angel's ever actually seen me do that. But other people comment on it because when I talk to women, I'm not shy. Right. Regardless of whether a woman is attractive or not, I'm usually happy, upbeat, extremely friendly. And I don't think I'm flirting with them because I'm not interested in them. Right. That I, I have a two position mind, which is basically single when dating. Mm -hmm. And if I'm dating, I'm not interested in anyone. Right. You know, and it's actually happened in the past where I ended up in a couple compromising situations where I'm like, sorry, my, I'm not actually reacting to you because I'm with someone else. I am that monogamous. You know, now please go away. I don't like being cornered. Huh. But, you know, but yeah, it's just one of those situations. That, God damn, we keep finding the boring places. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm. There's a village to the west, though. Probably not anything there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So I, I apparently flirt with them and don't realize it because I'm just being honest and friendly, and I guess confident. Mm. Which people assume is flirting. Like I'm just trying to be nice. Give me a break. <laughs> Can a brother just get along? <laughs> apparently not. No. Okay, because either I don't do it around Angel or she doesn't notice. Because when she's around, I pay attention to her. Right. As uh, you should. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, she's sane, but I'm still not stupid. When your girlfriend's around, you give her attention. Yeah. Well, so life gets very difficult. Well, now, yeah. I don't know. I'm 